now we'll be starting about the indirect tax laws fast track batch here we have discussed first of all we have discussed the entire syllabus of the indirect tax laws that is goods and services tax customs foreign trade policy we have discussed all the practical questions as well as all the important revisionary test paper questions as well as the past examination questions in gst we have discussed the amendments which have been made by the cgst amendment act 2018 which have been made applicable with effect from 1st of february 2019 as well as what the igst amendment act two thousand eighteen that has also been made applicable with effect from first of february nineteen so the amendments which have been there the vast amendments which have been there in the cgst and uh, igst amendment act and the same has been made applicable with the effect from first of february nineteen all those amendments have been covered in our this fast track batch and uh, along with the practical questions relating to such amendments besides this we have discussed all the amendments which have been made through the notifications up to 30th of april 2019 which are relevant for the november examination as well as the circulars which have been issued by the department those have also been discussed in this and in customs also as you are aware that a lot of amendments which were made by the finance act 2018 in customs as well as all the notifications and circulars up to 34 2019 have been covered in this particular fast track batch so entire syllabus covered we have discussed most of the illustrations and uh, the rtp questions past examination questions which are relevant for the november 2019 examinations for in trade policy also whatever the circulars are relevant and notifications have been made up to 30th of april 2019 in ftb we have discussed that is the extension have been given to those eu uz pcg advance authorization holders for importing the goods without payment of integrated tax and gst compensation says that is up to 30th of april 20 that all things have been discussed here so first of all you must be assured that we are covering the entire syllabus in fast track batch there must not be anything in the back of your mind that we are not covering the entire syllabus that is we have been covering the entire syllabus here and around about 85 to 90 hours duration is there of the entire syllabus along with the practical questions and our focus is on practical questions because as you are aware that total paper is practical question based so you have been able to attempt these questions properly so we are discussing them that is our basic advantage we want to say fine among the students is that they should score very good marks in their practical say questions the theory to generalization hota hai but practical questions are there if you attempt them write proper working notes that are very much beneficial at the examination point of view we have made key emphasis 
these topics are very very important from examination point of view during the entire syllabus which we have discussed in this past track batch so how it is different from a normal batch in a normal batch as you know the speed is but a bit less in comparison to a fast track batch we are in fast track batch we are a bit say faster but uh, you'll be able to understand the things even the students who have not started their GST or say customs or foreign trade policy they can also be able to understand the topic so I am assuring you the same so as such if you have lack of time and you want to study in that lack of time properly then also you can go for that fast track batch and in case you have enough time then you can go for what the normal batch also so speed matters here speed is a bit, bit faster in comparison to our normal batch and practical questions and illustrations they have been adequately discussed in this say fast track batch also so there's nothing everything has been say discussed now if you go for these fast track batches you properly sit understand the topics emphasize career important practical questions pay or you can score a good marks even in a short span of time but you have to practice on by your own hand it's very very important from examination point of view properly writing your working notes or say say up exam may present kar that is a base basic thing your presentation must be proper along with your working notes to say score exemption marks in indirect tax loss paper thank you very much blog credits so section 17 is a very important section which is dealing with say apportionment of credits blocked credit so if 17.1 17.4 it is dealing with the provisions relating to apportionment of credits that is if inputs capital goods input services they are used for taxable as well as non taxable supplies or exempt business non business so we'll have to apportion the same we'll be entitled to take the credit of taxable supplies or for business purposes for non business purposes non taxable and exempt supplies you won't be entitled to take the credit so that is a concept of apportionment of credit which we'll be discussing afterwards and there's a concept of block credit block credit is governed in section 17.5 so we'll be first discussing what block credit that is what the inputs or say the input services and capital goods which will not be eligible for credit that is block credit is 17.5 section 17.5 that is inputs input services and capital goods which are ineligible for credit so this is covering negative list of goods and services which are not eligible for input tax credit so first of all section 17 5 clause a it provides for what motor vehicles and other conveyances are used for transportation of persons it is motor vehicles 
which are used for what? Transportation of persons. So this has been amended by CGST Amendment Act 2018 with effect from 1 1st February 2019 that is motor vehicles for transportation of persons having approved seating capacity of not more than 13 persons excluding driver so if it is a motor cab which has approved seating capacity of six persons so excluding driver no ITC input tax credit is available so they are coming under the ambit of block credit if it is motor vehicle for transport of passengers having seating capacity of 14 persons or more excluding driver same is eligible for input tax credit earlier it was not eligible but now it is eligible for input tax credit so in case if a minibus is purchased or a bus is purchased which is used in course or furtherance of the business and is having a seating capacity of 14 persons or more excluding say driver so here it's not more than 13 persons including the driver you won't be what eligible to take the credit so motor vehicles for transportation of persons having approved hearing capacity of not more than 13 persons including the driver credit won't be admissible for the same so small cars or say innova car etc which is used for transportation of the employees you won't be eligible to take the credit but if uh, this it's a motor bus having approved capacity of say 15 persons and which are used for transportation of employees credit will be admissible for the same however in this case also where the approved seating capacity is not more than 13 persons including the driver credit will be available when they are used for what further supply of such motor vehicles that is for car dealers credit will be admissible when they are used for further supply of such motor vehicles when they are used for what transportation of passengers in case they are engaged in the business of transportation of passengers the business is transportation of passengers and the credit will be admissible of the GST so paid or imparting training on driving of such motor vehicles imparting on imparting training on driving of such motor vehicles in such a case credit of the same will be admissible so here it is what motor vehicles which is what designed for transportation of persons for transportation of persons approved seating capacity of not more than 13 persons the same will not be eligible for input tax credit 13 persons including driver but credit will be admissible when they are used for making further supply of such motor vehicles or transportation of uh, say passengers and imparting or training imparting training on driving of motor skills then then is next is vehicles and aircraft so vehicles and aircrafts won't be eligible for credit so no input tax credit shall be admissible of vehicles of say vessels its vessels and aircrafts it is vessels and aircrafts not vehicles for transport of goods
So vessels and aircraft won't be eligible. However, credit will be available when they are used for making the following taxable supplies. Credit will be available in these cases. So in case of vessels and aircraft, credit will be available. in the said cases what are the cases that is further supply of such vessels or aircraft if the vessels or aircraft are used for further supply of such persons who are making the following taxable supplies namely further supply of vessels or aircraft that is dealers of vessels or aircraft then if they are used for transportation of passengers imparting training or navigating such vessels imparting training on navigating of such vessels or imparting training on flying of such aircraft or if they are used for what transportation of goods the vessels or aircraft are used for transportation of passengers or say goods so their license will be in accordance with the according to the same they will be eligible for credit so vessels and aircraft won't be eligible for credit however when they are used for making the following taxable supplies that is further supply of such vessels or aircraft or say transportation of passengers or imparting navigating skills of such vessels or flying skills of such aircraft or for transportation of goods credit will be admissible in respect of the same then services of general insurance servicing repairs and maintenance in so far as they relate to motor vehicles vessels or aircraft in as is referred to in clause a or clause double a so here services of general insurance general insurance servicing repairs and maintenance of motor vehicles comma vessels aircraft which are ineligible for input tax credit however if these motor vehicle credit is admissible of motor vehicles vessels or aircraft if credit of the same is admissible then we will be entitled to take the credit of what the tax which has been paid on general insurance servicing and repairs and maintenance of such a motor vehicle so in case if a motor vehicle designed for transportation of transport of six persons is engaged in transport of passengers so we will be entitled to take credit of this motor vehicle so if insurance has been done or repairs and maintenance are carried out in respect of such motor vehicle credit will be admissible so fundamental thing is what if if motor vehicle vessel aircraft input tax credit is blocked under section 175 then 
if insurance services if insurance servicing repairs and maintenance is carried in respect of is carried in respect of such is same is carried in respect of such motor vehicles vessels and aircraft credit will not be admissible credit will not be admissible however if say this motor vehicle is meant for imparting drive training or driving it is meant for imparting training on driving such vehicle so here credit for the same will be admissible credit of the same is admissible so if it is generally repairs and maintenance will be much more in such case in case of such vehicles so if any repair and maintenance activities carried out if repair and maintenance activity is carried out credit of the same shall be admissible so it goes this way so however the input tax credit in respect of such services shall be available where the motor vehicles vessels a aircraft referred to in clause a or double a they are used for the purposes specified therein which we were discussing and in case where that when received by a taxable person if he is engaged in manufacture of such motor vessels by motor vehicles vessels and aircraft is engaged in manufacture of such motor vehicles or say vessels and aircraft he will be entitled to take the credit of the whatever general insurance servicing and repairs and maintenance activities have been carried out because in such a case when he is engaged in manufacture of such motor vehicles vessels and aircraft it will be its stock and as we have to we will have to get the same insured so general insurance we will be entitled to take the credit of the same and respect of general insurance services supply of general insurance services in respect of motor vehicles which have been insured by him vessels or aircraft insured by him so if xyz insurance company provides general insurance services for insuring motor vehicle which has been engaged for transportation of passenger uh, transport of persons and uh, approved seating capacity is only say 10 persons so here this insurance services won't be admissible but in case if a general insurance company has reinsured get reinsured done by abc insurance company and abc insurance company bills to xyz insurance company in that case credit of the same will be admissible so when they are received by a taxable person who is engaged in manufacture of such motor vehicles vessels or aircraft or in in its respect of supply of general insurance services in respect of motor vehicles or say vessels or aircraft which has been insured by him so prior to the amendment that is prior to first february 2019 section 175a was dealing with the specific provisions in relation to say motor vehicles and other conveyances credit was blocked but the credit was available when they were used for 
making following taxable supply that is further supply of such vehicles and conveyances transportation of passengers imparting training or driving or flight navigating such vessels or conveyances and for transportation of goods first of all there was there was restriction in respect of taking of credit in respect of motor vehicles for transportation of persons now this is only now it is restricted only to what 13 persons including driver so this amendment has been made and uh, beside this restrictions have been imposed in new law restrictions have been imposed in respect of servicing general insurance repairs and maintenance which was not available there earlier credit of the same was admissible but here now the credit of the same is not admissible then as with effect from 1 1st February 2019 that is food beverages outdoor catering beauty treatment etc so following supply of goods or services or both following supplies of goods or services or both so here what uh, restrictions have been placed is the following supplies of goods or services or both that is what food and beverages you won't be entitled to take credit of food and beverages outdoor catering beauty treatment health services cosmetic and plastic surgery leasing renting or hiring of motor vehicles vessels or aircrafts which have been referred to in clause a or a above except when they are used for the purposes specified therein so leasing renting or hiring of motor vehicles for per trans transport of persons vessels and aircrafts will not be eligible but if these motor vehicles vessels and aircrafts used for purposes which are specified in a and double a where credit is admissible if you are using for the purposes where credit is admissible in such case credit will also be admissible of GST paid on services on say input services of leasing renting or hiring of such conveyances and life insurance and health insurance so now here it is specified that food and beverages outdoor catering beauty treatment health services cosmetic and plastic surgery leasing renting and hiring of motor vehicles vessels or aircraft will not be admissible life insurance will not be admissible health insurance will or will not be admissible so here credit is blocked 
under section 175b1 so credit is blocked here however input tax credit in respect of such goods or services or both shall be available when an inward supply of such goods or services or both is used by a registered person for making an outward taxable supply of the same category of goods or services or both or as an element of taxable composite or mixed supply so credit will be admissible if they are used for effecting same nature of outward supply so for example if uh, sweet caterers limited is supplying catering service is seat wheat caterer limited is supplying catering service to pqr limited so pqr limited will not be eligible to take the credit of gst paid on such catering service gst paid on such catering service now sweet caterers have subcontracted a part of work to delicious caterers they have subcontracted what a part of work to delicious caterers and delicious caterers is supplying what services catering services to sweet caterers so here sweet caterers will be entitled to take credit because it is used for inward supply of catering service is used for effecting outward supply so here fundamentally credit will be admissible so the following supplies of goods and services that is food and beverages you have to remember food and beverages we will not be entitled to take the credit outdoor catering beauty treatment health services cosmetic and plastic surgery leasing renting or hiring of motor vehicles vessels or aircrafts referred to in clause a or clause a above except when they are used for purposes specified therein life insurance and health insurance however input tax credit in respect of such goods or services or both shall be available where an inward supply of such goods or services or both is used by a registered person for making outward taxable supply of the same category of goods or services or both or as an element of what taxable or mixed supply besides this we will be further discussing that if these goods and services are used under any statutory obligation that is under the it is obligatory for the employer to provide the same to employee obligatory on the part of employer to provide the same it to employee under any law law is that is statute then credit will be admissible credit will be admissible 
the next is membership of club health and fitness center the same is blocked the 17 5b 2 will not be eligible travel benefits which have been extended to employees on vacation such as home travel or do you travel concession so in respect of 17 5b 1 2 3 Credit will be admissible when it is obligatory, when it is obligatory for an employer to provide the same. to employees to the employees under any law for time being in force so you have to remember where the credit is restricted on food and beverages outdoor catering beauty treatment health services cosmetic and plastic surgery leasing renting and hiring of motor vehicles which are blocked life insurance and health insurance if then it is what travel that is membership of club health and fitness center travel benefits are extended to employees on vacation such as leave travel or home hold home travel concession however it's under a state very obligation or then credit of the same will be admissible and respect of the above if they are used for making the same nature of supplies Invert supply has been used for making same nature of outward supply, whether mixed or composite, credit of the same will be admissible. Now, prior to the amendment, that is prior to 1 2 2019, section 17 5b read as under. It is the following supplies of goods or services or both. That is food and beverages, outdoor catering, beauty treatment, health services, cosmetic and plastic surgery. Same were ineligible and the credit was allowed only the same category of outward supplies was made using that supply. So that was for food and beverages, outdoor catering, beauty treatment, health and services, cosmetic and plastic surgery. Under statutory obligation, credit was not admissible. However, credit will be eligible via an inward supply of goods or services or both of a particular category was used for providing the same nature of supply, whether a mixed or composite supply. Then 17.5 B2 was of membership of club, health and fitness center. The same were ineligible. They were ineligible in all the cases. So now here under the new law membership of club and health and fitness center eligible eligibility will be there under governments if the same has been provided under the um, under state very obligation that is there was an obligation of the employer to provide the same to the employees credit will be admissible but it was not admissible earlier then rent a cab was there life insurance and health services rent a cab life insurance and health services credit was admissible if uh, government notifies the service which is obligatory on the employer to provide the same to his employees under any law for the time being in force in these cases credit was admissible under state very obligation and if the it was used for providing same category of service inward supply was used for providing what same category of service whether as a part of whether as a part of composite supply or say 
mix supply. Then whatever travel benefits were extended to the employees on vacation or leave travel or home travel concession, the same was ineligible under 17.5 B4. Now here the law has been simplified now. Law has been simplified in the sense that for all these goods and services, eligibility will be there in case if it has been under a statutory obligation that is uh, it is em employer has to provide the same to the employees under any law for the time being in force. Then 17.5c was in respect of works contract service, credit won't be admissible, works contract service when supplied for construction of an immoral property. So if any works contract service is availed for construction of immovable property if works contract service is availed for construction of immovable property credit shall not be admissible credit will not be admissible however if say xyz limited is providing works contract service to say pqr limited for construction of factory building So PQR Limited won't be entitled to take the credit. XYZ Limited has subcontracted a part of the works contract service to ABC Limited. And ABC Limited is supplying what? Works contract service to XYZ Limited. ABC is limited is supplying works contract service to XYZ limited. In this case, XYZ limited will be entitled to take the credit of GST so paid on works contract service. Availed from ABC Limited. So, works contract service when supplied for construction of an immovable property, however, credit will be allowed. So, it is blocked here, but credit will be admissible in these cases. Credit will be admissible in these cases. That is what, where it is an input service for further supply of works contract service, which we have already discussed. And when it is supplied for construction of a plant and machinery, when it is supplied for construction of a plant and machinery. Here, plant and machinery means any apparatus, equipment, machinery which is fixed to earth by foundation or structural support that are used for making an outward supply of goods or services or both, or and includes such foundation and structural support. So foundation, and structural support for plant and machinery will come under the ambit of plant and machinery and works contract service So used for such construction shall be eligible for input tax credit and but excludes what has been excluded is land and building and other civil structures 
telecommunication towers pipelines lead outside the factory premises so here telecommunication towers pipelines which have been laid outside the factory premises and land building and other civil stru structures won't be coming under the ambit of plant and machinery and in case if works contract services is used for construction of such immovable properties credit will not be admissible construction includes what reconstruction renovation additions alterations repairs to the extent of capitalization to the said immovable property so in case if it is works contract service is availed for repairs of immovable property if it is availed for what in repairs of immovable property it will not come under the ambit of construction so credit will not be blocked and in such case credit will be admissible credit will be admissible so 175c is in relation to what works contract service when it is used for say construction of an immovable property and immovable property do not include plant and machinery similarly if any works contract services have been availed for supplying works contract services then credit will be admissible and plant and machinery it means all equip operators equipments machinery fixed to earth by foundation or say structural support that are used for making outward supplies of goods or services these operators equipments and machinery they are used for making outward supply of goods or services or both and plant and machinery includes what foundation and structural support also but it does not include land building and other civil structures telecommunication towers are not coming under the ambit of plant and machinery pipelines which have been laid outside the factory premises are not coming under the ambit of plant and machinery and construction it includes reconstruction renovation additions alterations or repairs if the same has been capitalized in repairs which are revenue in nature basically repairs revenue in nature will not come under the ambit of construction and uh, we will be entitled to take what the credit of the same so here works contract services availed for repairs which is basically revenue in nature credit will not be will uh, credit for repairs of immobile property credit will be admissible in in such a case here credit will be admissible because it does not come under the ambit of construction then in case of any goods and services or both they are used by a taxable person for construction of immoral property on his own account including when the such goods or services or both are used in course or furtherance of business so if xyz limited is constructing factory building on its own account and it is using say steel cement for construction of that factory building and other services have been used so gst paid on the same will not be admissible as credit it is coming under the ambit of block credit of goods or services or both 
which has been received by a taxable person for construction of an immovable property on his own account, including when such goods or services or both are used in course or furtherance of business. The immovable property may be used in course or furtherance of the business, but still credit won't be admissible. However, credit is allowed when they are supplied for construction of plant and machinery. So in case goods and services are used for construction of plant and machinery credit shall be admissible then goods and services under composition scheme we have already seen the definition of input tax do not include tax paid under section 10 so 17.5 e provides what goods and services or both upon which tax has been paid under section 10 credit won't be admissible then goods or services or both which are received by a non-resident taxable person so in case goods or services or both are used by nrtp credit shall not be admissible However, if any goods are imported by him then the integrated tax paid on imports shall be admissible as credit shall be admissible as credit and here non-resident taxable person means a person any person who occasionally undertakes transaction involving supply of goods or services whether as a principal or agent in any other capacity but he do not have any fixed place of business or residence in india the so nrtp do not have a fixed place of business or residence in india and is occasionally undertaking transactions involving supply of goods or services so nrtp cannot take credit of what the goods and services however if any goods have been imported by him whatever tax has been paid integrated tax and gst compensation says has been paid on the same credit will be admissible of the same then in case of any goods or services or both are used for personal consumption so if we say immovable property is taken on rent and say rental in rent is rupees 5 lakhs on which 18 percent gst is paid that is 90,000 gst has been paid and one third of immovable property is used for personal purpose in such case rupees 30,000 credit shall be blocked as per the provisions of section 17 5 c then in case of any goods have been lost the same have been stolen destroyed written off disposed of by way of grift or free samples so here output tax liability do not arise 
in such case in case the goods have been lost or destroyed or stolen or the same has been written off or disposed of by way of gift or samples out to tax liability do not arise in such a case hence credit is blocked then whatever tax has been paid in accordance with the provisions of section 74 129 and 130 so here if any tax has been paid where extended period of limitation is invoked for raising tax demands or say if the goods or conveyances are liable for confiscation under 129 or say 130 and tax has been paid if there is a detention of goods and conveyances in transit under 129 or say there is redemption of the confiscated goods and conveyances so whatever tax has been paid in such cases credit won't be admissible now we will be dealing with these section 17 5 only the questions practical questions relating to the same now x limited is a registered manufacturer it is engaged in the taxable supply of goods or services goods procured for of, of following goods taxable supply of goods procured the following goods during the month of october the same has been capitalized they have been capitalized in books of accounts of x limited determine the amount of input tax credit admissible by giving necessary explanations so it is dealing with capital goods for treatment of various items number 1 is electrical transformers used in factory in case of any electrical transformers are used in factory the same will qualify as capital goods and whatever gst is paid on the same it will be eligible as credit since they are used in course or furtherance of business so there is no such blocked then molds and dies used in the factory here credit will be admissible of this rupees 26000 pollution control equipment used in factory credit will be admissible of the pollution control equipment the same is also used in course or furtherance then capital goods purchased on which depreciation has been taken on full value capital goods purchased on which depreciation is taken on full value including input tax there on credit won't be admissible because the same has been specifically provided under section 163 that no credit will be admissible if depreciation is claimed on tax element then capital goods used as parts purchased from supplier who has paid tax under 10000 under composition scheme so capital goods purchased from composition supplier credit won't be admissible in such a case so the total amount of credit admissible will be rupees 
टू लैख सिक्सटी फोर लैख सेवेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड इन दिस केस फॉर ईच एंड एवरी पार्ट यू टू राइट नेसेसरी वर्किंग नोट्स नाउ हेयर डिटरमाइन द अमाउंट ऑफ आई टी सी एडमिजिबल टू कल्याण लिमिटेड इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ फॉलोइंग गुड्स एंड सर्विस प्रोक्योर्ड इन मंथ ऑफ अप्रैल टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन सो वी हैव टू कंप्यूट admissible itc so first of all for the various items motor vehicles for transportation of persons having approved seating capacity of 7 persons including driver so we have motor vehicles you for transportation of persons having seating capacity up to 13 persons including driver is blocked it is blocked under section 17 5a so here credit won't be admissible in respect of such motor vehicles then motor bus for transportation of persons having approved seating capacity of 14 persons motor bus having approved seating capacity of 14 persons including driver credit is not blocked will be entitled to take what credit of the same motor lorries for transportation of goods credit of the same is not blocked will be eligible to take what credit of the same that is 2 lakh 80000 rupees then food and beverages procured for sweet caterers or dealers meet food and beverages here the credit is blocked under section 175 b1 until and unless under it's a state very obligation provided to employees credit won't be admissible services of repairs and maintenance of motor vehicles used for transportation of goods services of repairs and maintenance of motor vehicles <clears throat> used for transportation of goods here credit will be admissible that is 36000 rupees because it is not coming under the ambit of blocked credit then service of general insurance of motor vehicles for transportation of persons having the approved seating capacity of 7 persons so services of general insurance of motor vehicle we have credit is blocked under section 175a so if the credit is blocked under section 175a in such a case if you use any service in relation to general insurance of the motor vehicles same will also be blocked under section 175 ab this has been amendment which has been made by the cgst amendment act credit won't be admissible of this 18000 rupees then services of uh, services of servicing of what motor vehicles for transportation of persons servicing of motor vehicles servicing of motor vehicles 
for transportation of persons. Having approved seating capacity of 14 persons. Since credit is admissible of this uh, motor vehicle, whatever servicing will be there, credit of the same will also be admissible. Since credit is not blocked, under section 17.5a, in respect of such motor vehicle, same will not be blocked. Hence, 54,000 will be admissible as credit. So, whatever total amount of credit it is, how much? 420 plus 36, 456, 460, 510 will be admissible credit in such a case. Then next is Determine the amount of input tax credit admissible to POSCO Limited in respect of following items which have been procured by them in, from, in the month of February 19. Inputs used for manufacture of final product. Inputs used for manufacture of final product. Here, credit will be admissible of rupees 72,000. Then, food and beverages procured from sweet caterers for employees under state very obligation. So, food and beverages procured for employees under state very obligation. that is under any law credit will be admissible as per the amended law same is not blocked under section 17.5b1 here credit will be admissible Goods used for providing services during warranty period. Goods used for providing services during warranty period. Here also, credit will be admissible of rupees 12,000. Goods used for setting up telecommunication towers. Goods used for setting telecommunication tower, telecommunication tower being an immobile property. So goods used for, say, setting telecommunication tower being immovable property the credit will be blocked under section 17.5d credit won't be admissible and input stolen from factory here also under section 17.5h credit won't be admissible so the amount of credit which is admissible is 1,42,000 rupees, 72, 1,32,000 rupees. Total admissible credit. Then Determine the amount of input tax credit admissible to PQR Limited in respect of the following goods which have been procured by it in the month of January. It is goods used in construction of additional floor of office building. Goods used 
for construction of additional floor of office building the credit is blocked under section 17 5 d here in this case credit won't be admissible under section 17 5 d packing materials which have been used in factory packing materials used in factory since they are used in course or furtherance of business the credit will be admissible then goods destroyed due to natural calamities here also credit won't be admissible if same has been provided under section 17 5h goods used for repairing of office building cost of repairs is debited to profit and loss account goods used for repairs of office building such repairs do not come under the ambit of construction in such case credit will be admissible of this 12,000 rupees then paper used for paper used for photocopying machine whatever paper is used credit will be admissible goods which have been given as gifts credit won't be admissible under section 17 5h then inputs used for tests quality control check fifteen thousand sixteen six hundred credit of the same will be admissible so the amount of admissible credit will be six thousand plus twelve thousand plus nine fifty fifteen thousand six hundred that is thirty four thousand 550 is what total admissible input tax credit then next question is determine the amount of input tax credit admissible to P limited in respect of the following items in the month of procured in the month of March 19 that is worst is good supplied for captive consumption in factory good supplied for captive consumption the use in course of furtherance of business credit of the same will be admissible goods purchased for being used for in repairing the factory building and the cost of factory share and has the cost of the same has been capitalized in the books so goods used for repairs of factory shed cost is capitalized credit won't be admissible then goods used for making foundation and structural support of plant and machinery goods used for making foundation and structural support of plant and machinery support of plant and machinery the same will be coming under the ambit of plant and machinery credit of the same is admissible as we have already discussed it in section 17 5 
the definition of plant and machinery was there then inputs used for trial runs that is 14,560 <coughs> credit will be admissible and food and beverages not under state very obligation in such case credit won't be admissible so the total amount of credit will be 28,360 rupees credit will be admissible in such a case you will write properly working note for each and every answer then ABC limited here is a company engaged in the manufacture of heavy machinery <clears throat> it has procured the following items during the month of July 19 electro transformers here electric transformers which are used in manufacturing process in manufacturing process credit of the same will be admissible GST paid is 360,000 rupees trucks used for transportation of inputs trucks used for transportation of inputs goods transport vehicles credit has not been blocked credit of the same will be admissible here raw material it will be an input same will be eligible for credit as well as what confectionery items under state very obligation confectionery items it is food and beverages under state very obligation in such case 25,000 credit will be admissible so amount of total amount of credit admissible is 8 lakh 9,000 amount of ITC admissible Now, IT XYZ Limited is engaged in manufacture of taxable goods. Compute the ITC admissible for the month of October 19 from the following particulars. Inputs X 1,20,000. One invoice on which GST payable is rupees 10,000 is missing. So, here credit will not be admissible. of rupees 10,000 since valid tax paying document is not available then input Y input is received in two installment first installment is received in October so in case of in this case also credit won't be admissible credit will be admissible when second installment is received then capital goods one like eighty thousand xyz has capitalized the capital goods at full invoice value inclusive gst and availed depreciation on full invoice value if depreciation is availed on full invoice value credit of the same will not be admissible and input service to like fifty thousand one of the invoice dated 21 19 on which gst has been payable was fifty thousand has been received in october 19 so we have to see when he has to furnish the return here the annual return has been filed on 15th of september 19 so therefore we won't be as per the provisions of section 16 4 we won't be entitled to take what the credit of the that uh, input service where annual return has been filed and the invoice relating to the same has been received after that date so here 
computation of the amount of admissible credit first is input x gst paid is 1 lakh 20 thousand 10 thousand invoice is missing so you will be entitled to take credit of only 1 lakh 10 thousand rupees then the next is next is what input y credit will be admissible when last lot or say installment is received so here in this case credit won't be admissible then capital goods since depreciation is claimed on tax element credit won't be admissible input services two lakh fifty thousand minus fifty thousand since invoice in respect of input services availed input services availed in FY 1819 say procured in say FY 1819 has been received after the date of furnishing of annual return as per the provisions of section 16.4 credit will not be admissible so here credit won't be admissible so the total amount of credit admissible is 2 lakh total amount of credit admissible is 3 lakh and 10,000 250 minus 50 is 2 lakh total amount of credit is 3 lakh 10,000 will be admissible in such a case then the next question is XYZ limited is engaged in supply of taxable goods as availed the following services in September 19 so input services sales promotion services you have to require compute the credit admissible sales promotion services credit will be admissible of the same it is 16,200 rupees GST so paid credit will be admissible health and fitness service await from physique club for upkeep of the health of the employees so health and fitness services not under government obligation credit is blocked under section 17.5b 1 then hiring of motor bus for transportation of employees seating capacity of motor bus is 40 passengers hiring services of motor bus so first of all motor bus is eligible for credit for credit 
hiring services shall also be eligible it is not blocked 4500 rupees credit of the same will be admissible then market research services market research services market research services that is a input service quality control services credit will be admissible of the quality control services works contract service for construction of office building for construction of of office building here credit won't be admissible same has been specifically blocked in respect of what this uh, works contract services which have been used for construction of the office building so the total admissible credit in such a case will be total admissible credit works out to be how much 16200 plus 4500 plus 10080 plus 18000 that is 48780 rupees then one question has been left in between compute the input tax rate admissible from to jewel limited manufacturer of motor cars in respect of services which have been availed in october 19 accounting and auditing services the same will be eligible for input tax credit health insurance services for employees services are not under provided under government obligation to so health insurance services same won't be eligible that is since it is not under government obligation it is blocked first is accounting and auditing next is health insurance blocked under section 175 b then routine maintenance of cars manufactured maintenance of cars since it's a manufacturer of car credit will be admissible repairs servicing and maintenance will be credit will be eligible in respect of these maintenance of cars repair services of office building cost of repairs is charged to profit and loss account it doesn't come under the ambit of construction repairs do not come under ambit of construction since cost of repairs is not capitalized so credit will be admissible then in travel benefits extended to employees under state vary obligation travel benefits extended to employees under state vary obligation here credit of the same will be admissible and testing services will be available for cars testing services available for cars credit will be admissible so total admissible credit will be 7200 plus 18000 plus 14400 Plus three three six zero plus nine thousand. That is five one nine six zero. That is the total admissible credit in this case.